In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, it's been quite a long time since the last time I was able to say this Mass. My favorite one is the one on Saturday, because it's very quiet, very few people. Um, today we have, we are going to have a second collection for St. Vincent de Paul, and weekday Masses and Confessions will take place here in the church from now on. And the Mass on Friday, the school Mass, begins at 8.15. I would like to say just a few words regarding one of the uh, fundamental factors contributing to the crisis in the church and in society in general. In the church today, there is almost a complete absence of what I would call spiritual fatherhood. For example, it does not take a lot of reason to notice so much immoral behavior, both on the part of Catholics in general and priests and bishops. But given that, when was the last time you heard a priest or a bishop telling us that unless we die in the state of grace, we are going to burn in hell? It takes a man to tell you this. I mean, most priests and most bishops don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Okay. So as long as you bring your envelope every Sunday, you know, everything is going to be fine. So, now, mortal sin, we know what it is. I mean, missing Mass on Sunday, using contra contraception, supporting for abortion politicians, getting drunk, bearing hatred in one's heart for someone else. These are mortal sins. So we need a spiritual fatherhood. If the men who are supposed to be spiritual fathers are busy practicing spiritual contraception, so to speak, they cannot be spiritually fruitful. For example, spiritually sterile men cannot produce vocations to the priesthood or religious life. Why is it? that we don't have enough priests today. Because we don't have real fathers, spiritual leaders in the home. So, now let us consider what is the corresponding problem in society. And for this reason, I'm going to read for you a few statistics. Children who grow up without a father are eight times more likely to go to prison. Children um, who grow up without a father are five times more likely to commit suicide, 20 times more likely to have behavioral problems, 20 times more likely to become rapists, 32 times more likely to become runaways. 10 times more likely to abuse chemical substances, 9 times more likely to drop out of high school. Then, according to the FBI, those children deprived of fatherly presence constitute 72% of all teenage murderers who end up in prison. 60% of all rapists, 70% of all kids incarcerated, and 90% of runaways. Because the father is not present at home. The Duke University made another study that shows that compared to daughters of two-parent homes, a girl is 
five times more likely to lose her virginity before the age of 16 if she stops living with her father before the age of six. So, the point is that we are suffering a crisis of biblical proportions with respect to the presence of a father in the family and society and the church in general. I mean, how can we have learned to become men if we have lost 42 million soldiers in the last century? So, in the last century, we have killed 42 young men in war, fighting. So what's the remedy? There is a fundamental principle in the spiritual life. Grace perfects nature. Grace works on what we already have. So if we have good fatherly priests and manly bishops, it is only because we have good dads, good fathers. If we have an orderly, God-fearing society, a decent place to live, relatively happy wives and well-behaved children, and a significant number of people living in the state of grace, it is because we have good dads, good fathers. The remedy is good dads, good fathers. It is impossible to overemphasize this point. So the question is, what do you need to have in order to be a good father or in order for you to have children? Do you think that only having sexual organs is sufficient for you? Primary goal, primary uh, goal of family is to raise, have children and raise them and educate them. So, how many people do we have in prison today? How many men in prison? I mean, millions, millions. How many families without a father? 60% of our children in our own school here, St. Catharines, don't have a father. Same. Someone has said that millions of Catholic children grow up and fall away from regular church attendance. In the U.S., it is estimated that only 13% of young people believe what the church teaches. So, in England, 92% of Catholic young people stop practicing their faith as soon as they graduate from school. In Australia, official church figures say that 90% of teens who, come to, who go to Catholic schools leave the church as soon as they graduate. The cure for this massive dropout is dad. Research shows that if the father attends church regularly, he conveys a lasting lesson to his children. For example, a Swiss study asked a question, what causes a person's faith to carry through from childhood to adult life. The study found out that the one overwhelming factor is the religious practice of the father. Dads determine the church habit of the children and to a significant degree 
their eternal destiny in heaven. Can mothers also do this? Certainly. The study showed that if the father doesn't go to church, no matter how faithful and devout the mother is, only one child of every 50 will remain Catholic. Yet, if the father does go regularly to church, regardless of the practice of the mother, approximately more than half of their children will remain Catholic. Same. So, I'm going to give you two concrete advices to parents, to dads this morning. I mean, the few that we have here in church, because the rest are not man enough to give witness to their faith before, before the children. First advice, at the natural level, unless it is impossible, you need to eat with your children. You need to pray with your children. You need to play with your children. Make it part of your regular schedule to spend some time with your children. And that means going for a walk, going fishing, um, you know, hiking, some kind of recreation. Say, do something around the house, paint the house. Say, don't worry about so much. Uh, everything being perfect, that doesn't really matter. You can paint the house again. The thing is to spend time with your children. You are in the business of raising virtuous children, not, not worrying about details uh, as you paint. Play with your kids, eat with them, work with them. That's the first thing. At the second, the second advice with regards to the level of grace, you have to lead a real Catholic life. Not half, not the minimum, but real Catholic life. Meaning, living in the state of grace, keeping the commandments, enforcing God's laws in your house, going to confession regularly, being a good Catholic example. You are the men and your children look up to you. What are they looking up to? If you are going to confession regularly and leading a good Catholic life, don't expect your kids to do the same thing, at least not for long. And don't expect your kids to spend eternity in, in, in heaven either. So, because everything depends on you. Pray the rosary every day and make sure that the rest of the family prays the rosary with you. Say, so, today we celebrate the feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. So, Pray before meals, after meals, before going to bed, things like that. Same thing with, when you come to Mass. Your children should already know what to do when they come to Mass. Same. So set the example with a virtuous Catholic life, regular confession, praying the rosary, and leading in prayer. Then one last thing, at least once a week, Sit down with your children, take out the Baltimore Catechism, read a lesson for them. There are so many things that you can read there, so many stories you can tell them. See, so if you don't do this, who else is going to do it? God has entrusted you with your children, with their education and their salvation. Almost everything in this world and in the next depends on you. Take responsibility. Do good. 
God wants all of you, each one of your children, to go to heaven. Let's do something about it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.